But eventually, in the uh, latter part of October of 1863, the Union Army is going to be able to establish a supply line that's going to now bring uh, much needed supplies into the city by coming up the Tennessee River to a point known as Kelly's Ferry on the opposite side of Raccoon Mountain, this first mountain range to our west. Kelly's Ferry, those supplies were put on wagons, hauled through the large gap in Raccoon Mountain into Lookout Valley and over pontoon bridges from Browns Ferry to Moccasin Point and then from Moccasin Point into the city of Chattanooga. And they were far enough in that direction to be out of threat of Confederate artillery. <laughs> now the fall of 1863 was a very wet fall here in Chattanooga. One night some members of the 18th Ohio Light Artillery posted on Moccasin Point on Stringer's Ridge across the river from us on that peninsula. Woke up to the sound of crack boom. Thinking that a thunderstorm was approaching, they got up to cover their stuff. As they're up and a little more awake and starting to cover their items, they hear another crack boom. This time being a little more awake, they realize it's not a thunderstorm approaching, that it is the Confederate artillery up here on Lookout Mountain. They turn and throw a few cho choice words at the Confederates and announce, boys go back to sleep, it's just those Confederates uh, on Lookout Mountain. So that gives you an idea of how serious the Union Army was taking the Confederate artillery up here. Parker's Virginia Battery would stay here until about the first uh, week of November when it is pulled off along with James Longstreet's Corps and sent northeast to Knoxville to try to regain control of that town and to reopen the railroad link between Chattanooga and Richmond. With supplies now readily coming into the city and with 37,000 uh, Union reinforcements having come to the Chattanooga region in the fall of 1863, Ulysses S. Grant now in command of all these combined Union armies in Chattanooga as well as in the Western Theater, the area between the Appalachians and the Mississippi River. In late November, he decides to attempt a breakout of the siege. Part of that breakout will include the Battle of Lookout Mountain, fought on Tuesday, November 24th, 1863. Early that morning, Joseph Hooker, with his reinforcements in Lookout Valley, along with some other Union troops, receives orders to make a demonstration against the Confederates defending the slopes of Lookout Mountain. Hooker is going to take a majority of his troops, march them about three miles up Lookout Valley to where they'll cross Lookout Creek at the site of a grist mill, and then ascend the side of Lookout Mountain, forming a long battle line from the bottom of the bluff that we are standing on to the base of the mountain. This battle line will then make its way from left to right, advancing along the western side of the mountain. As they come closer to the mountain's northern point, they come in contact with Confederates defending the slopes of Lookout Mountain. The Confederates on this day are greatly outnumbered. They are also outflanked by Hooker taking his command up the valley and then coming up the side of the mountain to come around and hit the Confederates on the flank. It forces those Confederates eventually that afternoon and evening to start withdrawing from the mountain. That night they'll retreat across Chattanooga Valley to Missionary Ridge to join our comrades in time for the battle there the next day. One of those regiments involved in the Battle of Lookout Mountain is the 8th Kentucky Union Infantry. Elisha Lucas, talking about the Confederate artillery up here on top of the mountain, said that though their ordnance made a terrific noise, their heavy missiles passed harmlessly over our heads as their pieces could not be depressed to a sufficient angle to reach us. Now, does anyone know the nickname of the Battle of Lookout Mountain? The Battle Above the Clouds. Very good. The Battle Above the Clouds. That name is given it by Montgomery Miggs, native of Augusta, Georgia, 
and Quartermaster General of the Union Army during the Civil War. He happens to be in Chattanooga during this time and witnesses the battle from the city and gives it that poetic nickname. The only more appropriate nickname he could have given this battle, rather than to call it the battle above the clouds, would have been to call it the battle in the clouds. For most of the fighting on November the 24th will take place in a heavy fog on a chilly, damp, drizzly, low visibility, low ceiling, but no snow, November 24th day. Confederates have artillery up here on the day of the Battle of Lookout Mountain. It is Max Van Den Corpitz, Georgia Battery. In his after action report, Van Den Corpitz said, the longest fuse that I had with my guns was seven, which time would carry my shells only one mile. The position of the Federals being far over that distance, I did not open fire on them then. After their first charge on our infantry, who instantly gave way, the enemy pursuing them, I opened fire on the Federals, having brought my section in position on the left of the mountain, which are represented by the two guns down slope to your right. I fired 33 shells, doing in many instances good execution, or so he thought. The Federals were, however, soon under cover of the rocks, and I was unable to depress my guns enough. The fog during all that time was very dense on the right and in front of the point. So those Confederate artillerists would be forced to withdraw from the mountain that night as well. The next morning, some members of Elisha Lucas's 8th Kentucky Infantry will volunteer to come to the top of the mountain. Finding it abandoned, they will go out to the mountain's northern point and plant their colors or flag. Coincidentally, it's about that time that the fog lifts out of the way. The Union troops in Chattanooga now see the colors atop Lookout Mountain. They raise a loud cheer for they know that the mountain has been taken and the siege is beginning to be lifted. Later on November the 25th, uh, Union troops of the Army of the Cumberland, late that afternoon, on their own initiative without orders, would charge up the slopes of Missionary Ridge, force the Confederate Army of Tennessee from the top. That Confederate Army would, would withdraw back into North Georgia and it would be the Army of the Cumberland that would secure Chattanooga with their charge up Missionary Ridge for the Union for the remainder of the war. In 1864, with Sherman now in command uh, here in the West, after Grant had been called East to take command of all Union armies in the field, Sherman will use the city as a supply and communication base to conduct a campaign into Georgia, eventually capturing the city of Atlanta on September the 2nd. And then two and a half months later from Atlanta, begin the march to the sea, eventually capturing Savannah just a few days before Christmas. So Chattanooga is a beginning of the end of the Confederacy. We're just a year and a half after the city falls. The Civil War is over pretty much in the spring of 1865.